something a little bit different now. We have invited champion kite surfer Lewis Cratham, who is also uh, a Global Wind Ambassador, to join us on stage to give a 10 minute intro into kite surfing and how the, some of the parallels between kite surfing and the wind industry. So I'd like to put your hands together, please, for Lewis Cratham, kite surfing champion. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you very much, Stuart. So this is what I do. I'm a professional kiteboarder. This isn't a very big jump, actually. This is one of the small ones. And it's a major passion of mine. And I've traveled all around the world kiteboarding. Been doing it for 20 years now. This shot from South Africa, Cape Town. It's a second home of mine. This one's actually in Brighton which is where I live in the United Kingdom. Just to the west is a very windy place and the place where I grew up on the beach where now there is actually the first offshore wind farm, the only one on the south coast, which I'm really proud about, right opposite my parents' house. I love big air. I love to jump into the sky with my kites, which I have two of here today, one at the GWEC sand, one just over there. And today I've been really enjoying talking to you all about my role with GWEC as a wind ambassador and how I relate kite surfing to all of this here today. Here's another big jump. And again, these aren't the biggest jumps. We go up to about 30 meters in the sky. Here's one of my boards. It's very exhilarating sport. I've met so many people today, actually, who windsurf, who sail, who kite surf, all with my kites here. This is what it looks like from my perspective when I'm in the air. When you're doing the serious moves, you have to have a, a serious face. It's a very wonderful place to be. Everything goes quiet when you jump in the air. It goes from very stressful and noisy, everything goes quiet. It's a great place for your mental health and well-being. I've traveled the world as a competitive kiteboarder. I'm a four times British champion, vice world champion in 2016. And it's taken me all around, like I've said. This is South Africa, one of my best results on the left. And that was a wonderful experience to stand up there. And what I started to really love about kiteboarding with my job is I coach people I teach them how to jump in the sky. I speak reasonably clear English, so I do lots of commentating. But one of the things I really love is how all the places I've gone in the world, I've started to really notice the wind farms and this, this amazing opportunity, which is everywhere, where there's so much of this going on in the world. This is actually a shot in Worthing in England, where I live as well. This one is in Taiwan, where I was competing. I've been to Vietnam, I've been to Brazil, I go to South Africa every year. These are key places of emerging markets that I hear all the time within this industry that completely cross over with my world of kiteboarding. And a very long time ago when I was younger, I started visiting schools because I found kite surfing to be the most wonderful, engaging sport. It's colorful, it's exciting. You go into schools and talk about kite surfing. So this is actually me when I had hair. This is quite some time back, this one. But I love doing it, it's really fun. And it's what we do at GWEC as well, who are my partner, who very much care about the next generation and we can do it with the power of kite surfing. It really is fun. We do this all around the world. We have a great brochure which has been developed with school teachers. We have them on our stand and we give these out as well. These are some of the slides I actually dragged from my school, which I would be aiming at around the years six to 12 maybe. So I know we haven't got that age range here, but I wanted to show you how it looks when we were at school, can we see the wind? And we all discuss it, they raise their hands, they put them down. We talk about nature and the birds and how they fly and how we can tell how windy it is. And how we can see with the leaves and how they blow. 
and how trees are even so amazing that they grow in the prevailing wind of some places. We have a lot of fun doing this. More shots here in South Africa. You can tell by my, my footwear, the health and safety officer wouldn't be too happy about that one. But we go outside and we talk and we engage the debate on sustainability and the power of the wind. And what's really magical with doing this is I can put my, my demonstration on. I can go and fly my kite to really grasp their attentions. I can jump into the sky and fly around. But this is the real magic of what it is that I do, and it's something we really believe about with GWEC, is that it's one thing talking to young people or anybody, but actually being able to pass the power of the wind directly into a young person's hand is very effective. They don't always want to just be told things, children, and this is most definitely the most special part of my job as a professional kite surfer and the work that I'm doing with GWEC. It's not all the work that I do, but it's a big part of it. Now, we are all very excited about wind in the industry. We're, we're talking constantly about scaling up new markets. We get it inside this building. But what I think is important is to never forget about making wind energy fun for everyone outside of this, certainly young people, anyone, communities. It's really important to make it fun. And what's lovely about my school visits is that the children, they send all these wonderful things to me about how they perceive wind energy to be, how kite surfing fits into that. It's really great, actually. It gives you a great sense of, of pride and that we're going to be on the right track. The young generation really understand it. This is our brochure. And the lovely natural flow of these positive messages not only go back home with the children with this lovely work pack that we have, which you can get over there at the stand later as well, they take it home to the parents and they fill in the exercises at bedtime and they talk together and the parents start to enjoy the messages and the parents find it, find it very fun. So it has a very natural flow to this positive energy and I love this work. He said never go back with this button so I'm not going to bother. I think you saw the last slide. This is a bit more about the other side to my work as an ambassador for GWEC, which is something I really enjoy. And this is my last trip on the run up to COP27, which will be in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. I visited and spent a week in the country. I've been nine times to Egypt, but this, my 10th time, was wonderful. I was tasked, I remember seeing the briefing document, we'd like you to go to the brand new wind farm, the Kayla's new wind farm, this is Faisal Izzah to the right-hand side, one of the key people there. We want you to see firsthand how much they're doing for wind energy. We'd like you to go and hang out with the British ambassador to the UK, who's also a kite surfer. I was reading this, this amazing document. We want you to go to the wind farm and see what it looks like, how new it is. It was very special for me to do that. We visited a local school. I'd done my school chat. We got a lot of people in there. And we made a difference to the communities there. Of course, we flew kites with the young people who knew all about kiteboarding. This was in the El Guna region, very popular. But all of Egypt is a great kite surfing location. This is me with the ambassador in the middle. And to the left, that's Faisal a key person at the wind farm there. And what an amazing job that was to not only spend time with them and visit these schools and communities, but actually go on the water ourselves kite surfing. These are my specially branded kites. I have one and two of today. And I'm very proud when I look up to my kite and see my GWEC logo and also COP27 on my kite. It fills me with great joy. It's a lot of fun. 
This is Khalid, who I met also, I believe is here as well. She's from GUX Women in Win Global Program, which is really, really amazing what they're doing for women in the wind. And I got to speak to her about how it feels to live in a town where that wind farm is, it's very much been and been created by oil and gas. And she was one of the first in her generation of generations that worked in oil and gas to work in renewables. And I got to sit down and speak with her. And I remember seeing this graffiti as I drove into that town, as I was driven there, where this brand new wind farm was. And this will stay with me forever, this picture. I, re I really actually went back a few hours to get this picture. And then I went and spoke to the school children and said, one day this will change. This wall will change and you will be the people that do that. And it's lovely to see what they're doing in Egypt in this transition from oil and gas, especially on the way up to COP27. So as ambassador, I'm doing lots with young people, also with uh, key people in different countries now. And I look forward to my many other roles, perhaps maybe going back to COP, Vietnam, all these places I've been as a kite surfer before, but now with this entirely new role as an ambassador for GWEC. So it's been very nice to share this with you today, what I'm doing. We do have more brochures in the back. And I'm going to pass back, I think, to Stuart, because I think we're about on time again today. So thank you very much for listening to my short chat.